I'm Lindsay Beauregard reporting from MRO America's 2022 in Dallas. Sustainability was a big theme at the show this year, so we spoke with some MROs and OEMs to find out how they're tackling the challenge and what aftermarket companies should be doing to prepare for a greener aviation future. I'd say, I mean, the industry as a whole is, un, un, is under the focus. I mean, there's a lot of um, global attention to, to emissions and aviation, while only contributing a small part of the global um, carbon footprint, is certainly very high profile in terms of the, uh, the emissions that the aircraft um, produce. So um, as, as the MRO industry, we also have to be engaged in that process, um, both in terms of what we do as suppliers to help the airlines reduce their emissions by um, the, the goodness that we put into the aircraft and their components and engines um, during the MRO process. And also um, in terms of the, as, as suppliers to the aviation industry, reducing the weight of the aircraft so that they consume less fuel. Well, there's quite a few things. If they haven't started yet, uh, really baselining themselves to understand exactly what their footprint is uh, from uh, different programs like air, water, waste, those types of things, as well as looking at their carbon footprint associated with their operations. From there, setting targets is very important. Aggressive targets would be preferred to reduce their impact and then ultimately teaming with others to ultimately reduce the and, and meet our net zero carbon by 2050 as an industry. I think for all of us in the aviation industry, what we can be doing is really one, focusing on where those opportunities are and actions we can take now because having a long journey of getting to net zero, we really have to take every opportunity to start now. That involves a culture change, um, but also the advocacy in helping those changes take place, whether it's with helping our employees understand it better or helping the um, different federal national governments understand what can be done in terms of incentives to help move it along. Fundamentally, we all need to take a look at our operations and, and put into place all of the best practices that we can to minimize the environmental footprint of our MRO facilities. Um, and I'm talking about reducing energy, greenhouse gases, uh, reducing uh, hazardous waste and, and water usage uh, on a holistic basis. And, and the technologies in this space are just growing fantastically in terms of their capabilities, which will enable us to, of course, reduce our environmental footprint as we start to deploy those overall. And so from, you know, from that perspective, that's what I would see as being one of the most important elements, in addition to a variety of different technologies that we can introduce to enable the, the aircraft themselves to run at the most efficient and optimal way. I would say that in the short to medium terms, uh, sustainable aviation fuel, SAF, will be the focus for alternative propulsion sources for, for aircraft. But also in the MRO environment, we'll, we'll increasingly want to use that type of fuel in in our testing processes, um, in, in terms of reducing the amount of fuel that we consume during those testing processes for engines. Um, and you know, there, there's a big part also for certification to be able to keep up with the, uh, the developments in the industry. And furthermore, supply is also a big issue. And, and uh, there's relatively limited um, supply available at the moment for SAF. And also, the geographic availability of that will also play a part in determining how and whether we can use that fuel. Some of the sustainability initiatives that we have focused on is, you know, to start with our operations, we've gone to net zero by 2020, starting in 2020, and we've continued that going forward, and that's around conservation, um, purchasing renewable energy and responsible offsets to kind of close the gap. The other thing that we've done is been out in the media quite a bit is, is the focus on sustainable aviation fuel and really catalyzing that and getting aligned with the policymakers around that. And then from a services standpoint, a lot of the digital um, innovation that we have out there that helps our customers understand where they are and where they can go and make those transitions both on the ground and in the air so that they can reduce their um, footprint as they continue to operate. Over the last two decades, we've um, uh, we've done quite a few things regarding 
reduction in waste disposal as well as uh, we've actually saved over one billion gallons of water in some of the systems that we operate. So it's, it's about sustainable business. The Greener uh, MRO initiative uh, that we started just this last year was um, really focused on energy reduction to, to start with. And in this year, we've expanded that to uh, include not only operations, but also our, uh, the way we test engines and greener test, as well as expanding into uh, the, the um, value chain, as well as the logistics and the way that we move products around. Uh, working on engine efficiency is something that we've done for the history of our life. And, um, but I would say that the more important and critical focus is, has been our efforts on, on making our own operations more sustainable. And we've been working that really hard since 2006, um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, uh, reducing water utilization, uh, hazardous waste, and, and also the, the amount of material that we put into the, the landfills or also the incinerators as a means to, to improve the overall environmental footprint of our operations. And in addition, we're working on um, basically looking at what we call management best practices. So there's about 30 of these that we've gleaned from our entire worldwide site of operations. And so we're taking those proven best practices and ensuring that every one of the sites receives the benefits and is implementing those to reduce their overall emissions um, you know, from a footprint perspective. And as a result of the success of those programs, we've actually ratcheted up or increased our overall goals for greenhouse gas re um, uh, reductions um, from you know, what we had previously was 2019 to, to 2025 at a 10% level. Now we've ratcheted that up by 5%. And then likewise, the same for renewable energy, which obviously is a key element of reducing our, our scope to environmental emissions. So, so th there are a couple of uh, things that we're doing ourselves to reduce our own emissions. And, and we're particularly focused on reducing our electricity consumption through installation of solar panels um, uh, on the roofs of hangars. I mean, th there's quite a lot of space uh, on many of our hangars, so we can um, actually yeah, use that space productively to, to uh, install solar panels and reduce our electricity consumption. We're also working quite hard, um, in particular in Hong Kong, with the local airport authority to reduce the, um, the emissions, scope one emissions from our vehicles uh, by moving to electrification of um, the ground support equipment that we use.